You are listening to the Kentucky X Files with hosts Dennis Mays and Tyler Stewart. Don't forget to subscribe to us on Spotify or YouTube so you never miss an episode. Now, to our show. Something that would be in the context of the what supernatural. What described as being a great, silver-looking, upright, bipedal creature, dragging a deer out of that cave and going up the hill with Hey, I got a question for you. Because do you believe in demons? And it takes one big step and vanishes. I'm like, oh my god, that was a big thing. Here, and look at these pictures of this, this white creature. Something seven foot three to eight foot tall. Right. That, let's say it like Now, to me right now, if this was a bear, then this bear was standing on his hind legs and he was running like a man. Now, this was no bear. Now, when it stood up, that's when I knew it was a dog man. Welcome back to the Kentucky X Files podcast, everybody. Episode 14, yay! <laughs> Sorry about the, the, it's like we don't have special effects, we yeah. don't have the clapping reel. Yeah, we'll get one. It's just not in the budget yet. Yeah. Tonight we have a guest coming on from another YouTube channel we found. The Swan Lake Bigfoot channel. And he's got some interesting stuff about Sasquatch and orbs. And since we've been talking about that... I'm sorry, you know what? I, did I say Swan Lake Bigfoot? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I, I did it. I did that one. Okay, all right. Thank you. So he's got uh, some trail cams. Does uh, videos about with his trail cams. He's got stuff going on with uh, orbs. Uh, some interesting pictures. Some interesting uh, interactions. And I don't know anything beyond that. So this is cold bore. Uh, let's just get him in here and. Let's just hear what he has to say. You know, I mean, it'll be fun, and maybe we'll learn something. I know I've been curious about the orbs, Tyler. I don't know how you felt about them, but I'm a little indifferent on them. I just I would like to hear everybody's take on it. Yeah. Just what the what everybody believes, what they what they feel that they they might be. That. So. It, do you have the same like I, I I have this weird weird feeling about it where I'm like the orb thing, you know. Uh, it's it's similar to the whole you know the Sasquatch UFO thing the connection there. Yeah. I'm not sure how I am going to get behind it. I'm not I'm not yeah. trying to shit on it. I'm just saying that I don't know how to get from point A to point B in regards to this. I don't really understand Sasquatch you know being point A and then UFOs being point B. The line that connects them. I don't get that. It's and I have the same thing going on with this. I'm not, like I said, not shitting on it. I just don't understand. So I thought, man, maybe this guy can help us and shed some light on it. His name is Robert Judd, and he is from the Swan Lake Bigfoot YouTube channel. And I'm gonna add him to Discord right now. Hello. Oh, we we'll see you. We yeah, hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me? Gotcha, yep. loud and clear. Yeah. All right, there we go. So, uh, Robert, can you if you can hear me good? Uh, I was checking out your uh, your last video, man. The sound like a Bigfoot came up and smelled a camera. Yeah, I I I'm not going to say that's what it was for sure, but um, it happened maybe maybe ten minutes after I walked away from that. Like I just I set one there, and you know it could be anything, right? I'm not. A lot of these things, I don't want to say it's a hundred percent for sure, right? Yeah, I understand that. And like, I mean, you walk away from things like that, and you know, you get the little sound. It could be, it could be a mouse climbing up and sniffing in into that that little microphone, right? So, yeah, 
you just never it's it's never for sure it's never for sure unless you actually see it oh right? yeah i'm always thinking that way when i'm out there yeah because i know a lot of people every little sound every little uh movement it's it's a big foot but i don't yeah. want to be that guy right so yeah. totally understand that completely you, you you got a lot of orb action on your videos mm-hmm. and uh that's something that we have been discussing back and forth but haven't really found anybody to really talk to until until getting to talk to you we are trying to understand the connection the the orbs and the bigfoot connection is just so wild for me as i've all you know just recently just seen the patterns the movement patterns the you know muscle movements i haven't really felt you know i, I thought i was looking for something flesh and blood and didn't realize there's actually this other level going on of of these orbs and things like that what what's your take on that man i mean what do you think is going on there um have you seen them for yourself at all i've never seen the uh the the actual orbs ever except i don't see them i don't see them either with my 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 human eyes right yeah i have never seen not even on my periphery or or anything like that. It's, I'm only capturing them on the video cameras and uh, the trail cams and stuff like that. So, um, like they, if I'm hearing noises, I'm getting the orbs on my video. But and I have that. I've kind of set the gifting bowl out here on the farm here, and yeah, and um, I videotaped out there about five six times now and i get the orbs and like even through the winter i mean i would get like a fresh you know half a foot of snow and i would go put the the gifts out there and get the orbs on the video and the carrots and uh whatever i put in the bowl is missing by morning five in the morning yeah i'd say no tracks right there's no tracks there's there's no nothing so I am starting to think that they're able to do this. I, I sometimes think it's a dimensional thing, like a like spirit form yeah. into a physical kind of a morphing thing. Like I don't know how else they could grab what's out of the bowl physically without yeah, without being seen. Form, right? Yeah, without changing forms, so they could actually physically pick up whatever was in that bowl. So. It's yeah, I've actually I've actually heard the uh, stories of that where they believe that these uh, the orbs are Sasquatch can actually shape uh, shape shift into these orbs or they they have some type of way to go into another I guess you would say dimension or you would, if you will so because uh, they I've heard stories where they see the similar characteristics of the like i guess you would say the sat like sasquatch moving from tree to tree breaking limbs but there was really nothing that they could physically see so uh that's that i've heard stuff like that uh it, it's it's very odd like how they could do that yeah it makes yeah, me we're, wonder. we're learning yeah we're learning so much as we go right yeah um i've got i've heard stories too where you've had two hunting parties and one's coming from one direction and one's coming from the other and one's seeing a wolf and the other guy that was in, actually in the in the trees seeing the bigfoot and the guy seeing the animal coming towards him is seeing a wolf so you know what that's i don't know what that's about but yeah it's interesting it's, maybe they can make you see something i know that they want you to see i don't i'm not sure I think if I mean if 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 that's the case, then it it just seems like we're we're dealing with something way more advanced than just an archaic mm-hmm. human walking around out there. Where's your location at? Where where are you located? If you don't mind me asking, I'm up in northwestern Alberta. Okay, um, probably about two hours from the Rocky Mountains on the okay. western side of the province. Yeah, awesome. Okay. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of sighting. I think there's more than we know. I think a lot of people experience stuff and they don't want to talk about it right or they will not tell anybody yeah 
I noticed there's like a- me doing me doing this too. Like I've been called crazy, like even from people in the communities here. Um, you know, I even ones I know that have actually experienced some things. They just they just stay quiet, right? Yeah. So um, it's one of those things. It's, it's interesting. There's a big group of uh, of people out there that have had encounters and actually seem to suffer from almost a almost a like a traumatic uh, state from it you know it's like uh, yeah. it it changes them it did something yeah, happens it, makes, in it them. makes you question everything right yeah it makes you wonder everything you know? that you thought was normal and real and so yeah, if you, it's, I mean you up there around your area I mean I've I've personally flipped through probably hundreds of uh, eyewitnesses you know accounts uh, in, encounters uh just interactions like crazy and the the orb thing even when someone tells their story a lot of times they leave the orb part out and come back later and say like yeah i left it out because it's it's crazy and yeah. we've i just recently heard a uh, a first-hand account from a you know this guy was a military man a career military man and he saw the orbs happen and he actually said that he was he was hesitant he didn't even want to tell anybody about that part of it he said that it's 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 bad enough just telling him about bigfoot but when you start bringing the orbs in he's like he felt like it was just too much you know but for us we're we're curious we want to know this is a crazy puzzle and there's so many parts to it that's why we're interested you know so it, it's it's incredible but I, mm-hmm. I noticed on your, on your videos, you know, you're doing a lot with the trail cams, and I know people have had uh, had difficulties with that. Are you are you finding that to be the same case? Are you having difficulties capturing what you're wanting? Or, um, I think initially, like when when I'm not sure how they have that all set up in the trail cams, but like when you turn it on, and if there's something that triggers that motion detector, I think there's like a a a second or two before that it actually turns your camera on and i've got a lot of videos where there's nothing um but it, it, to me it would have had to have been something physical right and but shortly after i get orbs coming through on the cam like just seconds later and i'm not sure if the orbs are able to trigger the motion sensors but yeah I, I, i've just been starting with the trail cam so yeah um, I do got one. I just went and picked up my trail cam from, I don't know if you've seen the video with the Seven Creeks area that I go. Um, and there's an orb. I mean, it's taking up half of the frame, right? And it's yeah. right in yeah. front of the camera. And it's, to me, it looks the size of a basketball. But, I mean, it's going to look pretty big if it's like right next to your lens. Yeah. So I'm not too sure on that one, but there's probably about four or five other orbs, and this is like in the middle of the nowhere, down in the trees. Yeah. And I had it sitting there for four days, and I only had one night where it kicked off twice through the night, and it's orbs. Yeah, it's, it's a whole bunch of orbs. So I'm, I mean, there's a connection, right? There's got to be a connection. You just don't know. Yeah, it's hard to figure out what it is. Works, how this, that works? Yeah. The yeah. area that you're that you're studying i mean is it is it known for sightings or is it is it um well this well that's it's probably about 11 11 miles from the farm here but this whole area there's been sightings and like we've been having them since probably 72 1972 was the first time we ever experienced something here. wow and then neighbors have talked about stuff and other farmers in the area and it's just been ongoing right so yeah and we've had a lot here right on the property like i think they're full of mischief they like to do a lot of um tapping on windows and and stuff like that i don't i'm not sure why it could be just to get your attention right so, yeah yeah that's a that's a tough unless they can tell you what it is they're doing um we're just playing a guessing game do you feel like the any of these ones around you, or do you feel like they have hostile intent? No, not at all. Not at all? They're more no, curious, you would say? <clears throat> um, 
I had one experience that was kind of, I don't talk about it much because I'm not sure if it was actually them, but I, I have livestock here and I had, um, I don't know if you guys know what boar, boar, South African boar goats are. Yep, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have a herd here and I was, had them in a pasture, I was with them and one of them was having issues. So I thought, okay, I'll take a, a needle out there with some penicillin. And I went to grab her, like I usually hold their head up and then, you know, yeah. you give them the needle. And when I did that and I went to stick the needle in something and we were next to the trees, something picked up my feet up from under me and literally threw me into the ground. I didn't see what it was because I went out. I actually lost consciousness for maybe 10 minutes. Wow. And I don't know. I'm thinking because they were, to me, like over the years, they like I've had things go on with the animals here and I think they, they enjoy the animals, my livestock. So I'm thinking maybe they thought I was going to hurt one. Yeah. Just the way I grabbed it, right? Um, maybe they thought I was going to slit its throat or something crazy like that. I, I don't know, but that was the only bad experience I had. And I'm not even sure if that was them, but I mean, what else could it be? Yeah. And we were right next to the trees, right? So that's the only, um, the only one, but wow, I'm thinking, crazy. Like, yeah. yeah. Lifted you like physically off the ground and, and what did it like? Yeah, like or? literally my feet were up in the air and it drove pile drive me right into the, into the dirt Wow! and everything went black and I came to and all the animals had kind of moved about oh, a hundred yards away from me. So I had to be out for a good 10 minutes for them to get there because they were just grazing, right? Yeah. You know, they graze and they walk slow and they eat and... Yeah, that was a uh, that was a crazy experience, well, and we, I don't uh, tell it because I just don't know if it was Bigfoot or not. So. Yeah, I understand that. We down here at my farm, we we raise Nigerian dwarf goats, so I have to ask: okay. uh, Did your did your goat turn out okay? Was everything fine? Or oh yeah, she was good. Yeah, that's penicillin good. worked. I got them back to the to the barn and stuff, and that's where I gave it the shot. But that's awesome. Mm, and I've had I've had gates gates open. Uh, through the night and all kinds of crazy things like that. But no goats have gone missing, though. No, no. Well, that's good. I'd, that's good. I think they like them. I think they like the goats, but yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's interesting. You know, we yeah. we uh, we've heard accounts to the contrary of that of of, of <laughs> you know people's goats being carried off and their pigs being picked up and taken and. Yeah, I hear those too. I wonder if it's if it's the Bigfoot or if it's like a um, like a hybrid or something. I, I don't know. I just don't see them unless I guess unless they're starving or something. But yeah. I a lot of times think the ones here. I've never seen a kill site. I, I've heard people talk about these kill sites, and yeah. and I have never seen one. And I've actually. Like where I go to that, to where I put that trail cam, that Seven Creeks location. There's so many elk through that area. Like everywhere you're walking, you're walking on droppings, right? Yeah. And I, I've walked that whole ravine and probably a good two miles back into that muskeg there, and I've never seen a kill site or any sign of bones, nothing. So I'm not sure how much of a hunter they are. Do you have a. Do you uh -huh. have fish? Uh, do you have streams yeah. with fish? Yeah. I was uh, I was looking into that, and because uh, I, I read it somewhere, they said that uh, for for something this this size to exist, it would take an incredible amount of amino acids and, and fatty acids, mm -hmm. and the best source of those is wild fish, especially fish in the too. in the north, you know, and yeah. up up in your your country, your area, so. You guys actually have like a almost like a you know a vending machine of amino acid and, and fatty acids right there in your back you know backyard. So I thought, you know, maybe they're really good fishermen as well. I've always thought I've thought that too that they eat a lot of fish because um, like this Swan Lake that I named the channel after. It's just it's like as a crow flies, it's probably two miles from me, 
yeah. uh, east of here, and there's a lot of Bigfoot sign around that lake. A lot of structures, and they're, they, they, over there they're kind of building these, they're like a hut type thing yeah. with the smaller spruce trees. They just seem to bend them and they, they kind of weave them in together. And, but they seem to be around that lake a lot, and there's a lot of rainbow trout in that lake. So, you know, yeah. it could be. The, be wild. Tell me, uh, tell me about the structures. What, uh, what, what are you seeing on that end? I mean, um, it's for me. Like, I mean, there's a lot of times you come onto some things, and and you know, you can see that it's a natural forming thing, whether it's wind or yeah. Uh, sometimes the snow. We get a lot of snow, and if it warms up, the snow gets heavy, and it will bend. It will bend trees, yeah. and it seems to. They just seem to keep that form. And maybe it's due to the cold and the snow. I'm not sure how that all works, but and you come onto these other ones, and you can be all the trees are straight up and down, and you come onto this TP structure. There could yeah. be like six or eight uh, trees. And for me, the only way I know it's an actual structure is you go look at the bottoms, and you don't find the stump of these trees, right? Yeah. So they have been moved there. And then they built whatever, you know, they're building their structure there. They move the trees from somewhere else. And that's the ones I say is a structure. Uh, anything else, if you can find the, find the stumps on the ground next to these things that are leaning, it's, I don't, I'm, I wouldn't say 100% that that's way yeah. Bigfoot made. I'd read uh, recently that there was a, a group of Native Americans. I can't remember the, uh, the name of the tribe, but their name for Sasquatch literally translated to uh, uh, it was like large man who carries multiple trees really? and I thought that was really fascinating we, we've recently been discussing the tree structures and I, I fell the tree here at my farm and my, as soon as it happened uh, of course my, my chain popped off of my chainsaw so yeah. the tree is literally suspended on a uh, a red cedar tree so it's just it's just sitting there and it's about an eight maybe nine inch diameter tree and i can't move it it's it's just too mm-hmm. damn heavy and i sat there and looked at that and i'm kind of standing out there with this chainsaw blade you know chainsaw chain hanging off and i'm standing there looking like a dipshit and i'm looking at this thing like how the hell do they suspend these things up in another tree? I mean, for a man to do that, you need to come along, you know, maybe a winch, maybe eight or nine guys. And if, if people are building these structures, then where's the evidence of that? And I'm not seeing it. I'm, I'm just not finding it. I, I want to see tire tracks, you know, or a tractor, you know, something like that. And I'm not seeing that. These remote remote areas with a tree that's 10 inches in diameter suspended up in another tree that blows my mind just absolutely blows well i mean mind. if they're if they're you know according to record and and people's like witnesses i mean they're seeing nine foot eight nine foot creatures right yeah. and i mean they they would be able to move stuff like that i mean they, they would have the strength right yeah yeah very interesting yeah. uh the structures that you said you're seeing them all around the lake yeah and this lake there. is known for for sightings or only through well i i'm as far as i know i'm the only one that's doing anything like this in this area okay. um and you know I've, I've taken a couple of friends of mine up in there and they will walk i think if you if you're not looking for them like i've watched them walk right under and beside these structures and I see them there sticking out like a sore thumb, right? Yeah. And they they are just oblivious to to these things. And um, yeah, so I, I don't know, a lot of people would just probably walk by and think it's just part of nature. Yeah. Part of the, the landscape or whatever, but it's it's if you're not looking for it, I guess you won't find it or you won't see them. Yeah. I've noticed yeah. that uh down here we're we're in kentucky and down here we don't have let's just say we have a lot of sightings but only a handful of them are tangible mm-hmm. and our our bigfoot that that me and tyler here have been tracking uh, we nicknamed him louie louie likes to hang out in an area for about a year 
and then he travels about 20 miles away after a year and then he hangs out there for a year but he's so always been yeah we've been tracking one uh we've physically never seen him we went in and we tracked him by the sightings if the sighting matched um basically a a, a specific set of behavioral pattern that we're looking for if it fit that pattern we we pretty much marked it as as our guy our louis and if you know and the funny thing about this was at the end of of our span we had him tracked for 10 11 years in this perfect northeast you know trajectory and he's following water supplies big lakes or rivers things like Mm -hmm. that and he's He's hanging out for a year, and then he moves 20 miles away, and there you have another sighting. And we we came to the conclusion that if if somebody was faking this, they have a a long investment in it. You know, they in multiple people, all cooperating a story over a span of 10 to 11 years, maybe longer. And we found that the water supplies are a big deal, not not just for the actual drinking water, but as a navigational. Uh, maybe a, maybe like a highway or, or a migration right. area, you know, like he knows there's a river, he knows where it goes to, he's going to follow it, you know. Yeah. And you're, you know, when when you said, you know, hey, we're right next to this, this Swan Lake, you know, and, and looking, and I as soon as I heard that, I'm like, well, there it is. There's the big water supply. They, yep. they seem to love it, you know. This tree structure thing, that's amazing to me. I'm, I want to get more into that. But we are trying to figure out where where Louie goes and where if he comes back, if he does a loop or if he just continues on or what exactly he does and in the hopes that one day we might know where he's gonna be and when. I think you, you if you just if you just stayed with the waterways like you said. Yeah. I think you'll find find something of him because even all other animals, you know, whether it's elk, deer Air, they will follow. They can follow the waterways, right? Yeah. The rivers, the creeks, the lakes. The uh, it's like you said. They they rely on that water source. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. The you said that around your area, there's been sightings. Uh, can you can you think of any that stand out that interest oh, you? Yeah. Or? <laughs> there's um there's an el- elderly fellow. He he's probably about ten miles north of me here. And he's right. He lives right next to the Alaska Highway, yeah. Which runs runs right through here. Um, he used to work. He's probably in his late seventies uh, today, and he used to work with an oil company. And there's this place. Um, he didn't speak about this for about oh twenty twenty some years, and he was at a job site and not far from the job site was a blueberry patch and it was in the middle of these pine trees and and his wife had uh, told him when he went to work before cell phones um, she said check the berry patch when he was done when he was done work they were gonna go if there were berries were ready they were gonna go picking berries so he pulls into this blueberry patch and it's kind of on a it's off a main road and you kind of take this back trail into these pine trees and down this hill and you got to stop and walk into this, this uh, blueberry patch and when he comes over the hill he sees what he thought was a grizzly bear because oh, wow. there are a lot of grizzlies in this area and he, it was big and it kind of was humped over and he thought it was a grizzly bear so he whistled just to get its attention and and this thing stood up on its, he thought the bear was standing up on its hind legs, but then when it turned around, it kind of screamed at him. And he said that lasted for, well, he said it seemed like forever, but he said probably maybe six seconds of screaming. And she turned around and she bent down and she picked up a little baby and put it on her shoulders. And down this hill she went, right? And wow he talks about the baby's eyes on him he said when she put the baby on his shoulder on her shoulder of course the baby's facing him and he could see these big eyes and he said he's 
he's not even sure how long he stood there after she disappeared. He's at, she went down that hill in that ravine so fast, yet walking, and she was out of sight. And he said, and I was still standing there. And he said, I'm not even sure how long I stood there. And that was his story. And he said he never believed in anything like that before that that yeah. moment there. Right. And the baby thing that he said, that's what stayed with me forever was because they obviously have babies, right? They have offspring. That's amazing. Yeah. It was, and he, it's, he's just, he's that type of guy you meet that would, you know, he's, he's kind of aggressive. He's butch, he's macho. He would never, Yeah. he, he just wouldn't admit to something like that. But later he tells a story. That is incredible. Yeah, and that, incredible. I would say that's probably, it's quite a ways away from here, 20 miles west of, you know, it's still not far. I mean, 20 miles for, they could cover that. Uh, yeah. I think I'm pretty sure. They can definitely they cover can. that. I mean, I, yeah. I don't think they, I don't think they move in a rush. I think they kind of, uh, <laughs> I always make this joke, but I think they kind of mosey. They, they kind of just, mm-hmm. You know, if if an area is good, they hang out, they they enjoy it, but they don't they don't seem to over, they don't do like overkill. They don't they don't seem to wipe out an area. They kind of just take what they need and move on. And I think that's really yeah, I agree. awesome. I agree with you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you, you obviously you're interested in this. You got a whole area rich with with activity, and you started a, a YouTube channel, and it looks like it's off to a great start. What's uh? What do you, where do you want to go from here, man? I mean, what's what do you want to catch? What's your goal here? Um, just to tell the story, like our our story here, right? I mean, there's so much going on. We get so much even in the yard here and next to our our houses. We get stuff going on, and then I got the three locations that I go to away from the farm. And the only reason why I go, I, I like I stumbled onto the structures, right? I, I yeah. seen them back in the bush and they, you know, I went in and the first time I went in, you start hearing wood knocks and, and, uh, I've had a few times where I've heard the, I don't know, it's like a chatter. I don't know if it, it's, it sounds like gibberish Yeah, is the only yeah. word that comes to mind. Like I can't make sense of it. And it's just, it's, it's almost sounds like a moaning and then they get it they get excited and it, it, it sounds like just plain gibberish you can't make sense of it but i've heard that both those vocalizations and in all these places i go so that just that just made me want to go back right so just a, a speculative um, question just, i think just to tell the story is is what we want to do here yeah yeah a little spe- and, and of course learn as we go right absolutely absolutely <laughs> Do you think that when you when you go in there and you hear that stuff, do you think that they're announcing you, that they're letting each other know you're there, or do you think you're interrupting a, a conversation? I think they're letting each other know. They're kind of warning because each other. I, I've heard one. I've heard one from one direction, and it's like I've heard three in in session with each other, and they're all in different areas, but it's like one after the other. Yeah. And then then it changes then it, they just seem to go quiet and then they'll respond to me uh, but that's not always right a lot of times there's nothing it's it's quiet um, either they're not there or they just and like i think going back to what you were saying that they're very passive they're just kind of moseying along right yeah and uh if if they're there when you're there then they they make themselves known or or I think it depends too, like there's something to say about how people approach them or approach their environment. Like if you're going in there all guns a blazing, I think they're just not going to be there. They're just going to disappear. Yeah. Uh, Cause they pick up on it. Right. I think they're very sensitive when it comes to what kind of person or what type of person. Yeah. Is, they can, is, can tell like body language. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Body language and if it's aggressive, they'll. Mm-hmm. kind of steer away from it if it feels that it's more I feel like that's probably why you hear a lot of these uh, these encounters with kids like they uh, kids will say that they've been ushered out of the like out of areas 
Yeah, it's because they see a child, like it's a child, like it's very innocent. So that's why I, I feel like that's I, I kind of can get where you're going with that. It's like the demeanor of the person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You would think they'd be masters of body language. I mean, you know, yeah. keeping out of they sight. Yeah. It's a, it's mean, incredible. Yeah. I you're, agree with that. I think they can totally read the ball. Well, I mean, you know, body language there, like you said, they, they, the thing they do best is they hidden. Yeah. Right. And they know how to do that very well. And I don't know, um, heard them right in front of me. It sounds like it's right in front of me, but I see nothing. I have, you know, you can't see them. And I don't know if it's something they can do so that you don't see them or they're just very good at blending in. Yeah. Have you ever had like any of these like uh, times you've like heard anything? Have you ever had like an uneasy feeling like that flight or fright, uh, like flight or fight uh, thing? Mm -hmm. Um, Have you ever had that? I have. Uh, you have yeah i think when i first started um i would it would you get that feeling right you get this feeling there's somebody something there and you're being watched and immediately there you get that flight that fight or flight right either stand your ground or run and so far i've managed to not run and just stay put and just you know i i've i've work myself to the point where now I can now take deep breaths and calm myself and just stay there but you do get that feeling like you should just run away do you think it's something that they're doing because I've heard that too is that they think that there's they they can like make like some type of like sound or and it makes you feel that uneasy feeling do you think it's coming huh an infrasound or something? Yeah, yeah, that's what. Yeah, yeah. that's was the word. Yeah, infrasound. Mm-hmm. Like they say that the, they're thinking that they can make that sound, and it gets you that uneasy feeling. And uh, like, because I think they said that they actually found an animal that we've been walking over for years, and it's been doing that every time. Like, it, it, I can't. I need to look up that animal, but yeah, it was somebody else that said it, and I was like, they. They're like not cooperating with that. Another cryptid, or I don't or just, think it was. Uh, I don't think it was a, like it was another cryptid, but it was like a small, like rodent type creature. Okay. Yeah, they said that it was making that noise. It was another. It was when we first started to dig into uh, uh, Sasquatch. I read a, a form. Uh, another research group said that they had that assumption that they were used that Sasquatch could do that infrasound and that's the the feeling that you're getting so it's uh, um it's the frequency in question is uh seven hertz it's uh, an mm-hmm. extremely dangerous frequency especially if it's if it's you know really intense because it can actually disrupt your body you know, your organs in your body even your heart and brain from functioning properly and I think even the slightest little bit of that coming your way will cause an unease and if a creature that big with that big you know with with lungs that size could could get that you know that low rumbling out I don't even know if we would hear it I don't know if it's even in our spectrum of hearing but at 7 hertz they say it's Uh, do you know who's who's, you're kind of freaking me out right now (laughs) I've had something like that happen um i would say probably four years ago mm-hmm. west of the property here and and i was feeling I, the only the only thing i was feeling was something in my chest but i end up um almost wanting to like toss my cookies right like i got nauseous i yeah. got a headache and my eyes in behind my eyes hurt for like the rest of the day i don't know I didn't know what happened or what that was about, but like you're what you're talking about right now, that's it almost sounds like that's what it was. Yeah, seven hertz. Uh, it's it's a uh, it's it's really crazy because there's a few animals that actually do it. Um, uh, alligators are known for it. Uh, rhinos are known for it. Uh, I, I even think that uh, whales are known for using it to dissuade you know things from attacking their babies. 
Yeah. And, um, yeah, it, it, it actually has a very real effect. And this is a proven science. I mean, it's not a, it, it's, we're not, uh, what ifing on the seven hertz frequency. That's actually, that's actually a known science. And it can actually disrupt your brain waves and it can, it can cause stresses to the optic nerves that you have. So that explains the pain behind your eyes. Wow. It's crazy. It's wild, but it, yeah. the more stuff we line up, the better, I think, you know, we'll, we start painting a much bigger picture and just being able to reach out to, to you know, from, from Kentucky all the way up to, to where you're at, you know, and being able oh, yeah. to add pieces like to each other's puzzles. For, you know? for actually doing that too, reaching out and connecting. Absolutely, man. That's Absolutely. awesome. Yeah. We, uh, the reason was, uh, uh, honestly, the, the reason I landed on your page was I was looking for information on orbs uh, mm -hmm. in regards to the Sasquatch and as soon as I typed it in, I get 10 pages of Discovery Channel and, and other nonsense. And yeah. as I, I'm sitting there and I was like, you know what? I, I need to look for something that's, that's recent. So I changed a little filter there to, to give me something that happened, you know, within the last couple of days. And yeah. yours was one of the first videos that popped up. And I saw the channel was pretty new. And I thought, you know what? I want to talk to a real person. I don't. I don't want to look at this stuff. You know, this garbage. Yeah. I want to. I want to speak to a guy. I want to speak to somebody who's actually out there doing this. And that's how we landed on you. Right. So I watched a couple of your videos, and I thought, you know what? If this dude wants to talk, man, this, I think it would be beneficial for everybody. It'd be awesome. Oh yeah, don't get me started. Plus, you know, we'll we'll yeah. we'll get your you know we'll we'll get your YouTube channel out there farther and and try to help you grow it. You know and. So have you guys captured any orbs? No, no. Are you filming? Or I was going to ask you if you were filming, you know, your, uh, what did you call that one you were following around? Oh, Louie. Yeah. Louie. We have never, never seen Louie. We've never captured him. No we've orbs. never taken pictures of him. We've never even been within, we've never even been within 50 miles of him, to be honest with you. Everything that we have is solely tracking him by his behavior on a map looking you think up you know you're following him i have no idea i don't know how he would i mean yeah. we're we're remote viewing louis basically uh oh, okay we we went through and we found hundreds of sightings and we started marking them on a map and after we got them done we looked at the map and went through it and started picking out uh similarities you know behavior traits and then we started removing the rest and then we looked at geo, you know, geography locations of where he might be and what he might be doing, and stuff that didn't fit. We got rid of that, and in the end, we ended up with maybe twelve total sightings that fit our our uh, profile. And it kind of went across the middle of Kentucky near Louisville, and we thought, okay, well, there's Louis. Let's uh, let's follow Louis. Let's see what Louis's doing. Basically, what I wanted to do was I wanted to take the sightings and either prove that this is an actual being or creature with a behavior pattern like everything else on the planet, or we would find a, a no pattern at all and prove it to be a hoax. Right. We were we were willing to go either direction, and I think that's that's kind of why we we've been on it because. It's not letting us go either direction 100%. It's, it right. keeps fluctuating, you know, and I'm leaning more towards that Louis is actually there and he's moving in a certain way and he has a certain behavioral pattern. I don't know if all Bigfoots are like this, but I know this one is. So we've never even seen Louis. We don't have any video of Louis. We don't have a picture of Louis. Uh, we've never personally even stepped into the field near where Louis sighted and even looked at the areas. It's solely based on the sightings that people report and the similarities and behavioral pattern. Right. So it's it's a weird take. I, I'll admit mm -hmm. that it's a strange new take on on how to do this. But the way I saw it was is if it's a hoax, we'll be able to pick it out by the inconsistencies in the sightings. And if it's real, it's going to have a very very habitual path that it likes to take and very habitual things that it likes to do along that path which is exactly what we found yeah. so are you guys um 
do you guys have another channel? Are are you going to upload any of your your uh, you know your findings? Uh, the maps. Or the, the yeah. episode. The episodes are on there. You can actually watch them, and they are long. They're they're an hour long each. I'm I'm sure because we didn't cut anything out. We just we just threw them up as is. Uh, we didn't want it to, to seem like we were editing anything to make it look better for us or anything. It's it's when we discover the pattern, it's on the video. You you'll hear it, you'll see it, and it's our reactions are real because we're we, it stumped us. <laughs> we were we were yeah. sitting there like we're like basically uh, holy shit, what are we yeah. seeing here? You know, this is a it's like the pattern. biggest hoax ever, uh, ever or what? If this is a hoax, it's got it's got dozens of people involved over a span of you know a decade and a half and i right. just don't know if i mean are hoaxers that passionate i i just don't see it i can't see I anybody know. being yeah. that passionate to fake something you know over that long of a time it just seems like they would lose interest at some point so i, I don't know it's there's there's obscure details that we've you know that we found that didn't seem like something anybody would even think of to fake. And, right. and it just didn't add up, and that caused us to kind of go a little bit farther into this rabbit hole. And I don't know if we're, you know, if we're stuck in the rabbit hole or if, or if we're ever going to get out. But every time we, we talk to a fellow person, you know, a fellow who's also, you know, interested in it, it seems like we, we put together a few more pieces as we go. Right. Yeah. yeah. It, it works, you know. It works really well. Yeah, so, it's a whole bunch of pieces to a puzzle. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it yeah. definitely is. Mm. But it's a it's a gigantic topic, and oh my god, there's so many people that are extremely passionate, and some that are, I think might be overly passionate. You know, passionate. Yeah. And you know, there's there's a few. Well, we edit the names out of, of some of the folks on here, but the like the Todd Standing stuff, man. I I'm I have a hard time getting behind it. The mm -hmm. the faces that he put up there. There's so many things going on in those you know those frontal face pictures that he put up that just seem to me like yeah you know I agree. I agree yeah. yeah it's it's crazy but there's a yeah, few videos I I, you know. From what, you know, if you experience any of this stuff, I, I don't know if one would ever just, you know, sit there and let me film them, right? Like, yeah. they always stay hidden, and the, anything I've caught that resembles them moving or a face, it's it's like my back's to them, and it's just for a brief few seconds, right? Yeah. That's all all I've ever caught, and yet, you know, you see some of these, this footage, and it's like, it's there, but like, he's got, I don't know. I, I don't know how many minutes he's got of those faces, but they're just they're just letting him do that. Unless, you know, I I don't know. I I I, mean, I wouldn't say for sure, but I like like yourself. I have I have some. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I seen that uh, on one question, of your videos. You know. I seen on one of your videos that you had uh, some eye shine come up. Uh, could you could you go into that a little oh, bit? Yeah. I do um, with the orbs. Um, I've got the eye shine. I have some older videos. Like I first, when I first did the YouTube channel, I had a different. I went by a different name, and it was. It really didn't make any sense. But it was Kindred Four Spirits. I still have the channel, but I removed all my videos and now moved to Swan Lake Bigfoot because I live near Swan Lake, and uh, the creek that runs right next year. Um, it's coming from the lake and it's Swan Creek, so it just made sense to to change the name but um so i've been doing this for about two years now and in some of the older footage i got eye shine and then now with the trail cam i think the one with the orbs i think you've watched yeah um i got eye shine there and then i've got it in another one coming up here i still haven't edited got it up in the channel but they and they're very wide set and he or she seems to be very close to me and I don't I usually know when they're near in the dark by my dog he starts to whine and he will just lay down and he just he just whines right okay so that's always my indication that there's something close to me and then I'll get that you know you get that creepy feeling 
and something's there, something's with you, something's watching you. And uh, just about, you know, every time I go over the video, I get that eye shine. Yeah, it's pretty and wild. they are very bright set, and they're a blue color, kind of on, on off, like a blue glow to them, um, which I don't quite get, but... Because I've heard people say yellow and red, and yeah. and every time I've got the eye shine here, it's a very, it's a very, uh, I call it an ice, an ice color, yeah. cool color, yeah. I guess. But um, you know, you can turn around in the dark, but I'll see, you see nothing, right? Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. It, I, I noticed that a while back. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at videos that I was a couple of them. I was convinced it was a guy in a suit. And uh, another video came up, and there was eye shine. And I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm like, "Oh man, if there's another guy in a suit." But then it kind of dawned on me, like, "Well, I mean, humans don't have eye shine. Why does this guy, if he if he's in a suit, why is his eyes shining like that?" And mm-hmm. That was that kind of you know it, it kind of stopped me in my tracks for a second and made me think, like, "Okay, well, there's something." Yeah, uh, it's it's interesting. I've always felt the eye shine was uh, definitely uh, way up there on the creep, you know, creepy factor. Yeah, you know, yeah, but, you use the uh, the night vision on monoculars, and that is difficult to tell what you're actually looking at, but you get the eye shine, right? Yeah, but yeah. with those as well, though, uh, human eyes will shine with the monocular. That's yeah. something to think about where it's. Um, Without the IR, like the infrared, uh, humans' eyes won't shine. But if you're using a, like a trail cam or a monoculars with the IR light, you, human eyes do shine. So yeah, to keep in mind. Yeah, it's a good point. I think mm-hmm. that the uh, I honestly think that the that these guys are highly adept at, at night vision. I feel that they can see very well in the dark. And it would, it feel to me, it feels like that would that would corroborate the uh, the eye shine thing. Yeah. It would it would kind of explain that, you know. I kept thinking, uh, I, I was reading a, a, it was basically a, a spectral analysis of, of different, uh, you know, different types of lights and different uh, light wavelengths, you know, and, and the spectrums of each one. And I started noticing something that animals that have a really adept uh, night vision say like a, an owl or, or you know maybe maybe a bat I, I think bats are, are well at, at night vision as well I know cats are but a, a little camera emitting a little bit of ultraviolet is almost going to look like a fire coming off of mm-hmm. a tree for them and I started thinking that you know maybe it's not too hard for these guys to avoid a trail cam because they're think, seeing it, you know, they're seeing mm-hmm. that light. Yeah, I have often thought of that because, um, it, like you said, if they if they're seen in that that infrared or whatever, it would it would be blinding. It would be very bright. Yeah, and I wouldn't go to that. If I, I mean, if I there was a bright light in front of me, I would just avoid it. Right. Exactly. I mean, it yeah. depends that they're able to just go around these things or stay out of out of uh, the front of them. Yeah, you would think they'd be able to see it from quite a ways off. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm assuming. I, I I obviously don't have night vision, so I, I can't tell for sure. But if I did, I'd imagine that in anything emitting ultraviolet or even, I'm not so sure the infrared is, is going to come up as, as, you know, as hot. But I do think they might see it, you know. So if we could find some other light, source you know or a camera that works off a different light source i think it would be i think it would it would change things drastically mm-hmm. you know I, I i feel really feel that if they are out there walking around and, and they see that well in the night then as soon as they spot this this crazy light coming out of this tree they're just going to turn and go the other way <laughs> or try to throw something at it mm-hmm. there's that um I mentioned I went and picked up the trail cam here yesterday and I've got something on my video trying to mess with my camera and 
I, you, in the one corner of the video, you see these long hairs right at the corner of the video, the frame. Yeah. And yeah. you, I, that's all I hear is this, and the camera's moving, and some, to me, it sounds like something's trying to untie it, right? Because I kind of wrap the tie around the tree and tied it behind, and there is something definitely messing around with the back of that. I would say the other side of the tree because the tree is maybe oh eight inches round. Yeah, and yeah. that's where I attach the camera to. But there is definitely something there, and, and like you say, if they're able to see that light from a long ways away in the dark, uh, go behind it, right? Yeah, you got to be careful. You might uh, you might go to get one of your cams and find it, you know, twenty foot up in the air in a tree structure, uh, or never <laughs> find it. Yeah, you know. Yeah, really? they could. Oh, well, they could just take it and throw it, and yeah. you would never, never find it out. I, I guess if it was someplace, I know there's a uh, there's a lot of people that they do the research just in like parks and um, campgrounds and places like that, and and places like that you could put a cam and probably find it. But where I go, it's like in the middle of nowhere. If they were to take it and take it, you know, half a mile away, I would never find it. Yeah. It's so dense back in there. I actually thought about um, if we ever get a, a good spot down here that that would be a, a, a decent place to maybe place cameras. I was actually thinking about trying to find some old style uh, film cameras mm. and putting those out, you know, and, and trying to lower that, that intensity of, of ultraviolet, something that just opens and captures, you know. Right, and right. just see if uh, see if it yielded anything. You know, I thought, well, if we can if we can get rid of that, you know, that big warning light coming out of these cameras, maybe we could uh, maybe sneak one by them, you know, or, and maybe capture one unaware. I don't know. Maybe if he heard the click, it might piss him off. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I sometimes wonder if it wouldn't be a good idea to have one or two, oh, like two of them out there, but facing each other and just off a little bit. Yeah. Uh, like your chances of capturing something might be a little bit better. Like a trap but, camera? Yeah, because they would see one. Yeah, I don't know how that would work. I got to think about that one some more. Um, but, do, what do you guys think about the drone? The drones and the... I've not had any luck over here with them. Like it, uh, like everything, even even my livestock here and the birds and everything, They just it, it's driving them crazy. Jones and I've heard a lot of people talking about uh, the ones that are doing research that you know they're throwing rocks at these drones. It's Bigfoot. Yeah, I personally that not went into that high yet. Pitch, the high pitched sound maybe that goes along with the drones. I'm not sure, but there yeah. is there's a few accounts out there where the Bigfoots have actually taken them out. Wow! Like with, uh, with a rock or a boulder or something. Some of them drones are not cheap, so I, I imagine that's heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Have something yeah, toss a log up there and take your drone out or knock it out of the air like a baseball. Like every like all the eagles and and stuff like that, they're even attacking those drones like right out of the sky, taking them out. So I don't know. That's crazy. There's something about them that the like most wildlife do not like. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, uh, I personally haven't haven't really reviewed much drone footage yet. I, I'd like to get into that here very very soon. Uh, I've played around with one just here around the farm, just you know, just messing around. But I'm not a good enough flyer to to trust myself to go back in the woods and fly it in between trees. You know, <laughs> I feel like I would. Uh, a lot of people are. It's just short distances, right? Yeah, yeah. Plus, uh, like you said, the the noise coming out of it. I feel like they'll they'll hear it, you know, and try to get away. And if they can't get away, they'll just. You know, we got one on you know one video where this thing fires a rock. It you know sidearm throws a, a rock the size of a, a bowling ball. And my son, he's a he's an animator and he's he's all about frame by frame stuff footage. Right. And he he got it down to this thing was sitting and up and throwing this thing in you know less than a second. And the the and rock it, goes flying. Like it was a legit video. It was a. It's a video on uh, YouTube. We we got it on one of our uh, one of our videos. Uh, it's a couple episodes back, and uh, we broke it down frame by frame, and was showing this rock fires 
horizontally at, at a at a speed that's just unimaginable. Hmm. And I was sitting there like, man, I was I was under the assumption that these things just grab a deer, but now I'm not so sure. I think they could probably kill one with a rock. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just it's incredible. It's faster than a man could throw one. Mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't throw one like that, you know. It, it's there's so many out there. There's so many out there that that'll throw you off and there's a lot of videos that waste your time, but then there's a few where you, when you really go into detail on them and, and break it down, you you kind of sit there and you go, "What the hell is this? This isn't a man. This is something else. What what am I looking at?" And that's that's what we got to do, man. I mean, that's why I think it's all of our responsibilities to go through these and you know, literally weed out the 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 bullshit, the the crap. Yeah, and try to get to the the real stuff, and try to cooperate with each other as much as possible. That's what that's one of the things I enjoy about watching you guys. You guys doing exactly that, right? Going through and weeding out the for me, it's the legitimate uh, encounters from the ones that are. I don't know, there's good storytellers out there, right? Yeah, there's lots of them. But, oh yeah. Um, yeah there's- I've I've doing the youtube channel i've learned the hard way you know you come on to to some who i don't think you're ever gonna please them oh yeah right yeah. they're always looking for that that proof right they got to see one they got to see a bigfoot walk in there and yeah and anything else uh it doesn't really matter but then when you show them that video then they dissect it then they mm-hmm. they go for it then they they start tearing you apart and it's, but uh, there, but there is something to say, like what you were just, uh, what you just referred to as, like we have to go over even those ones, yeah, right, and uh, kind of pick them apart and, and really make a decision whether they're legitimate, legitimate or, again, like you said, somebody spending a lot of time hoaxing. Yeah, I, I, I do the think wedding. there's, there's definitely a, a large group out there that's. They, I don't know. I can't personally get in the mind state of why it would be entertaining to them, but I, I guess it's entertaining to them to just stir it up and, and confuse it. And recently, I, I was reading into the, the lumber industry. Um, the lumber industry in the United States and the Pacific Northwest is five hundred billion dollars worth of business. Wow. And I started thinking about that, and I'm like, okay, so you've got you know, five five hundred half a trillion dollars in, in a business, in a gigantic forest area where you take lumber regularly, and if someone comes along and says, "Hey, I have legitimate proof that there's an archaic human or or an upright bipedal ape walking through here," all of a sudden, five hundred billion dollars is gone, and that area is protected. Yep. And I started thinking, well, there's a good incentive for anybody to put out disinformation and you know continuously shut it down shut the topic down but it seems like more and more people are are joining the side of hey we we just want to know the truth of this you know and we're not going to stop until we do mm-hmm. but it's it's amazing uh, i heard a story of uh today where i just i just interviewed someone uh this afternoon where they were camping at a at a lake and out of nowhere there's no one around they went two miles to get to a campsite that they wanted to be isolated they wanted to be alone you know backwoods camping and out of nowhere a boat comes out of the darkness and spotlights them just like that like they they just found them just like that Hmm. and tells them like hey you can't be here you gotta go and in the middle of the night that night they got bluff charged while they were in their tent and you have to wonder you know why did the officials come straight to them and how did they know they were even right. there right and it, it's it's incredible you know it's mm-hmm. there's there's a lot of levels and there's a lot of different things you know, going i think on. i think yeah i think the government's out there have no more than what well, they'll ever let us know yeah um i don't know how much you guys believe in or think of or um, 
interview anybody with the UFO whole. I know there's a lot of people that are trying to put the two together, like the Bigfoot and the UFO and the, yeah. the, uh, the aliens bringing, dropping off the Bigfoot. And, um, I myself don't really know where to go with that, but there is up here and with the Alberta Cattlemen's Association. Yeah. They are ordered. Like if they have anything, like there's been some mutilations up in this area and there's actually a Hutterite colony in, in my community that have been told if you get anything like that, you're supposed to go straight to the, uh, our, our police, like the RCMP, the Canadian Mounted Police with your, uh, your story or whatever it is. They're not supposed to talk to anybody else, but but the law enforcement. Yeah. That's weird. Like, I mean, and this only happened within the last 10 years because there's a lot of these cattle mutilations happening. And, and the, the, this how do I call me? They have had quite a few things like that go on with their, with their livestock and they have to go straight to the, to the government basically with, with, they have to write out a statement and, and they're told to keep it hush hush. All right. That's, it's kind of crazy, crazy stuff. But like that with, like, how did they know? Like, like you said, how did they know to how find did, those people? Yeah, how did they know exactly where to be? Yeah, that's, it makes you wonder. Are they tracing them? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> or know of a way to do it. Yeah. It's, know. it's incredible that the cattle mutilation thing is, is something in its, in its own. I know we have stories of it here in, in Kentucky and the, the entire Ohio Valley, but we, we personally haven't even begun on that subject yet. We've, you know, it's, it's definitely on the horizon. I, I can tell that. I mean, this rabbit hole is big and it's going to take <laughs> a long time to get through it. <laughs> and you go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how far you go down there, though. How far do you want to go down there? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some. I've heard some and, stories and recently. Yeah, yeah. I've heard some stories recently. Death threats, uh, things like that. There's, you know, people threatening. There's people showing up. Uh, officials showing up to people's houses and basically telling them, you know, hey, you know, we we don't want this out anymore. You know what I mean? Um, we had. I heard one story of. Uh, a pretty prolific uh, Bigfoot enthusiast actually being <laughs> taken aside and being coerced into telling everybody that he was hoaxing. Oh, wow. And hmm. he stands by that he was not hoaxing, but he was oh, being they told. Oh, to they were to force yeah. him to admit to that. Okay. And then recently, uh, about, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago, I found a video online of a... I thought it was, I was looking at a Sasquatch video. It was a mother and two daughters. And I'm going to continue putting this out here on this show because I know somebody else has seen it. And I, I want them to, to get a hold of me somehow because I think this is almost, for me, this is confirmation. This video showed a lady and her two daughters and they went to a place to picnic and up in a tree is a thing watching them. And uh, the little girl turns to the camera and she says, "I want to go home. I don't want to be here. What is you know? What is that? I don't want to be here." And the first thing I noticed was the little girl's eyes were dilating. I mean, oh, wow. as soon as they were, I saw them dilating. I knew that this little girl's actually scared. She's going through some kind of a trauma. She's scared. She wants to go. So instantly, I'm like, "Okay, what are they seeing? What's in the tree?" An artist went back and he froze the frame and he started drawing it. He went to the location, measured the tree, and realized that whatever was sitting in the tree had its legs bent and it was going from one branch to another of 13 feet, which means that if it stood up on its, you know, straight up and down, this thing was well over 16 to 17 feet tall. Wow. I tried to save Wait. the video and then it disappears. That sounds familiar. Was that down in near that Bluff Creek area, like I, in California? Or I'm not real sure, but I'm not. If that was a Sasquatch, I mean, that's the 
that's the granddaddy of them all, you know? I've never heard any of them being that tall. But this video literally disappeared. It's nowhere to be found. It's gone. And mm -hmm. I have spent so many hours searching for it. And I've, I've recently just, just kind of given up. I was like, okay, so obviously somebody doesn't want this video out there. They have went to great lengths to make sure that it's just nowhere to be found. And even the artist, I thought, okay, well, the artist. I'll look for the artist. Can't find him either. Don't know don't know where to even start you know it's it was really strange when it happened because it was to me it was a really interesting video and i was very very excited when i seen it because i'm like hey this is this is crazy this is bigger than any of them mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're just uh they're just gone you know they're missed. yeah mm -hmm. so I, I don't know what's going on but there's there's definitely a you know something to this how many videos are out there that are are just being you know blacked out mm -hmm. and we're not getting to see them we're not getting to see these pictures you know how do i wonder how you would protect yourself from that something like that um i've had helicopters flying over here like after i i think it was after about eight months after i did the youtube channel and uh, we never see army helicopters here ever no, and, and that you know it just made me I it could have been nothing right but yeah. I for for about a good week there I was thinking like why like why now kind of thing yeah uh, timing weird coincidence or some of that nature yeah, yeah. so like some of those things just you, you know that somebody somebody's pulling the strings behind the curtain they're wanting us not yeah. to know something because I can't I can like say that if, even if like a lot of these like encounters that people talk about are hoaxes but somebody like but there's like a bunch out there they believe that they saw something just like anybody else like they don't know like they I genuinely know that these people saw something but they just can't put it into words. Sometimes they say it's a Sasquatch. Sometimes they can't even tell if it's a Sasquatch. It's just, I know for a fact that it's it's out there, but somebody's trying to hide it for it from us. Yeah. yeah, I believe that too. It's crazy, man. <laughs> uh, you want to, I'll, I'll, I've got a story about a dog. Uh, it's not about an actual dogman, it was a baby. Yeah, um, and this is documented up in this in Alberta. I think it was back in 1943. My mother talks about this story she read in the, uh, you know, the city of Edmonton. Yeah, uh, the Edmonton Journal. It was back in 1943, and the Canadian Railway comes kind of through there near the city, and um, they were coming through. Uh, do you guys are you familiar with the uh, Banff and Jasper pr provincial parks in Alberta? Uh, no, no. Okay, they're 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 major provincial campgrounds, and they're right in the mountains. And the uh, the CN Railway kind of goes right through there, and so it was coming through the town, and there was this box sitting on the tracks. So the conductor he stopped slowed the train down and went out to move this box and when he got to it he could hear this whining crying sound coming from the box yeah and when he opened up it was this half it was a hybrid it was like it had a wolf head and a human body and he of course he flipped out and he kind of backed up from it they called the the uh, local sheriff there in Banff, and they come and confiscated that box, and that's that's the last anybody heard of it. So wow, and it was an infant. Like in the paper, they said it was only they figured four months old. Wow, yeah, okay. uh, and it had. They said it had the snout and the ears and the teeth, and, and but a human body. Wow, yeah, that, yeah. Uh, so and that was documented. So a lot of people believed in that story, and then, but of course, nothing was ever followed up on it, and it just kind of faded off into history, right? So yeah, it's interesting. I mean, yeah. 
yeah it definitely it definitely lends itself to to my theory i had no idea of that story that's uh that's pretty wild I've been trying to actually find it in the archives, and I, ha- I, c- I can't find it. But yet, my mom swears. I mean, they used to get the paper all the time. That was a once a month thing, and back in the day. And she remembers that story, and it, a lot of people talked about that for years, and then nothing. No kidding. Yeah, that's man. That is that's absolutely crazy. Mm. It, it makes me it makes me think, though. I mean, that's exactly what. I'm leaning towards is that these are grown. They're they're raised. I mean, if yeah. you had somebody training them and, and uh, you know basically operating for them, then they would have to be raised. You know, you, yeah. This thing would be it would be torn between two different you know sets of instincts. Are they just letting them out though? Is or are these escaped bunch? Yeah, we or are they just let them out. We talked about that because there's stories of, of two different ones clashing. Hmm. You know, um, there's there's stories we've heard of where, you know, there was these other ones that were, you know, almost a little bit more wolfish looking and different, you know, like brown colors and, and whatever. And then a larger, you know, more definitely more efficient uh, black colored dogman goes for it and, and literally kills it and we kept thinking that well I wonder if uh, if they had a few you know that have gone rogue and they send uh, they send the black dogs to uh, to take care of it right I don't know it's 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 crazy you know it's uh... in some ways I kind of believe that if the if the whole hybridization is real with that with the dog man I think they're bred for the Sasquatch. You the government, they're, you, they're using them to to, to hunt control down. the yeah hunt down and control the population of the Sasquatch. That would be that would be my kind of theory on it. But I don't have nothing to really back that up. I it's just it's just assumption. Yeah, I've definitely heard of those like stories to, too. To hunt the Bigfoot or. Yeah, or, like, uh, like, cause to keep it controlled, like to keep, like, maybe to, like, we we personally don't have anything to combat, like, to fight against Sasquatch, and a lot of people believe that these are crazy animals. Yeah, I know there's uh there's some people out there. Uh, there was another podcast. What is it? Bigfoot Chronicles. Yeah, she does not want nothing to do with these things. He thinks that they're just bad, just bad creatures. Yeah. So, yeah. That's you guys. Oh, it's all good. Yeah, you're all right. Man. I don't know. It, it would make me wonder, you know, it would make me keep an eye out on new military installations placed around the Pacific Northwest. You know, mm-hmm. if they if they put up new bases, you know, and they... they uh, basically, I, I'd be looking for a perimeter of bases put around the the forest areas and if if i saw that i would probably lean towards the yes they're they're being used to to hunt them down well there's a natural like uh government parks and stuff um i kept thinking like my idea this is out there and i'm just thinking if it's actually using a dog as their base to uh for uh for a hybrid uh human and dog you know the like think of like the like speaker systems that they could put on just like random watchtowers and have that like little high pitched noise yeah, the dog to control whistle. them. Yeah, the little dog whistle to to get them to go back and forth and stuff of that. Like that's kinda like where I, my head was at on that. Yeah, I, it's it's definitely out there. I mean it's mm-hmm. it's uh, we have no basis other yeah, than no basis. Uh, a it's pattern. Just, that's that's just, basically it, you know. Yeah, Dogman is such a huge can of worms that it's it's hard to because Sasquatch is a little bit easier to sink your teeth in. Like that could yeah. like could li- like have lived with us as we were evolving into what we are today. I can't. I can't get behind that. Dog man was right next to us too. Yeah, living living side and, by yeah, side. Yeah, yeah, living side by side. It has. 
there has to have been something it's man made, man designed. Yeah, I I I feel like it's not a natural occurring thing. We don't have a blueprint and you know we have Gigantopithecus in you know, in our natural history that says that hey, an upright, you know, thousand pound ape is possible. But we don't have anything that says that an upright bipedal canine is possible. So it it makes me think that maybe they, they designed it. You know, but again, it's all speculation until until we go further with the pattern. You know, and hopefully, I'm hoping. I, I just hope we're wrong. To be honest with you, I don't want to be right about that. Yeah, Bigfoot, I'm on board. You know, if I could help prove that, I feel I feel good about that. But Dogman, I don't want to prove Dogman to be real because I feel like uh, there's a bigger monster behind the Dogman, and that's us. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so twisted, right? That whole dogman concept, like the whole design of it. It's just, it's just, it's off. Yeah. yeah. And whenever I think about the myths, like I've had some experiences here and I, I couldn't say if it was dogman, but it was not Bigfoot. Yeah. And, and it, it, it was scary stuff. And, and I don't know if it's like you were saying, like they're, they're, they seem to be traveling together, but avoiding each other. Yeah, and I I never really put much thought into it, but um, you were just mentioning there about the government using them to keep yeah. an eye on Bigfoot, maybe possibly. But, you know, it's, it's just, it just seems very crooked and twisted. That whole yeah, even how like if they're if they're creating these creatures, I mean, they're so twisted, right? They've got they've got dog and human and what else in there. Yeah, what else could they be uh, making? You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Your thing. It's definitely. And how will we ever know, right? You, I don't know if we'd ever know unless. I feel like you have to have top security clearance. Yeah, it's just me. <laughs> just <laughs> I feel like I'm like I'm a guy with a aluminum hat on right now with that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Well, Rob, we are hitting the one and a half hour mark here so that'll probably okay. be good for the episode uh you want to plug your channel or anything uh you know um i'll it's i'm good just with what we got here it was i like i said i want to thank you guys for for coming forward and reaching out and connecting and absolutely well we'd like to with your permission we'd like to plug your channel and uh get okay. some get some folks over there to to show some support and check out what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, now what little I have, I'll push my or uh, your way. We yeah. appreciate it, man. You know, yeah, appreciate it. Keep putting that out right. there and you keep getting. Guys, that, have uh, a a good evening and uh, thanks again. Hell yeah, man! We appreciate yeah. it. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And keep your head on a swivel. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if you're out and about, absolutely. Okay. We appreciate you, man. You have a good one, buddy. You too. Thanks. Bye. Bye. All right, folks. That was Robert from Swan Lake Bigfoot YouTube channel. You definitely want to check him out and yeah. check out those videos. And that is one dude. one good dude to talk to. I I really uh, enjoyed the entire conversation. Oh yeah, totally. Like his yeah. When you were talking about the the eyes. Uh, he actually got eye shine. Oh yeah. Actually, I actually ran over there, over to his channel and checked that out. That's a little creepy. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah like uh... dude, like the way that he like it was really zoomed in a little bit, but it was right over his shoulder. Yeah, yeah, I oh, saw that. God, that I I would have shit myself if I <laughs> saw that on a camera. And I'm like, nope. He, he does. Uh, he. He definitely does keep his uh, keep his cool, and he keeps right with it. And I, I really, uh, I really appreciate that about him. I think uh, the... I feel like I, I enjoyed this episode a lot because I feel like we both we we all kind of like gave information back and forth, and we kind of learned. Uh, yeah, it felt like we lot. were networking a bit more. Yeah, you know? yeah, we're networking, and I like that because I feel. I, I don't know how much truth is the whole inf uh, infrasound uh, yeah. thing was, but it after him saying that experience that he's had and all the symptoms that he had and you listed it, 
Yeah. That's crazy. That guy, like, I like that because it actually gives a little bit more credibility to that whole. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, to that. I, it, I, I it definitely lends that. itself over to, to the symptoms of the, the seven hertz range. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, you know that's a big that's a big thing, you know with the with the Sasquatch that that took on a huge you know uh, a huge following when when someone actually brought that up the you know that impending dread feeling that that nausea the sickness all that and it made me interested so I I searched uh, if I wanted to know if there was any sound frequencies that could actually produce that and I came across the seven hertz and uh, I found out that this was medically proven and that lots of animals out there actually use the seven hertz uh, frequency to to disable and, and dissuade other animals from messing with them so it's very 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 interesting and also very terrifying yeah very very <laughs> and yeah. like some of, some of the stuff that you listed too were uh mammals considered mammals so it's not off the beating path of yeah not too far what Unless we find a, a Sasquatch egg, that I don't. Yeah, I don't even. I don't even want to know. <laughs> if there's a Sasquatch egg, I don't want to discover it. I don't want to know anything about it. Just, just keep that from me. You know, if you find <laughs> one, just, just hide it from me. Don't let me know about it. I don't. Th- I think my brain would explode. <laughs> I don't think it'd be. Uh, I'd be able to. So I guess uh, you want to end this. Yeah. End this episode. I think I think we should say goodbye for now and Okay. Uh real quick though, I wanted to I definitely wanted to plug that you're definitely gonna wanna check out next week's episode after this one. Uh we have a really cool encounter from Cave Run Lake. And uh it's gonna be a little different. There's gonna be uh basically what had happened was um I had the opportunity to to record a first hand account and I had to take it uh, I wasn't prepared, so it's the audio is going to be a little different. But I figured what we could do is we could we could get in here and we will record our podcast, and I'll just play the story in the podcast for everybody to check out. So I okay. think it's going to be really interesting, Tyler. I think you're going to enjoy it a lot too. It's uh, it's I can't wait to hear it. it's it's creepy, but it's it's good. You know what I mean? So definitely uh, appreciate everybody. Uh, yeah, make sure you go uh, check out Swan Lake Bigfoot. Yep. Yeah, send him some love. Oh, he's yeah. got some good videos on here. He, he kind of like he's actually out in the field trying to trying to find trying to find the big guy, man. Yep. Trying to get him. Yeah. He's a really good man to talk to. So Hell show yeah. him some love. Absolutely. Like, share, subscribe. Hell yeah. Boom. Absolutely, and you know what? Speaking of like, sharing, and subscribing, don't forget to do that on the podcast. And we appreciate everybody who has. And those of you guys that are driving back and forth right now, going to and from work, listening, we appreciate you. And thank you for for the support. Thank you for keeping the the thing going. And you know, we appreciate it as always. I don't think I'm ever not going to say that. I uh, I'm really <laughs> blown away by you guys out there. And. I'm yep. glad you're out there listening. And I'm glad you you like what we're doing, and yeah, Tyler, I think I think that's it, man. I think uh, let's say goodbye before one of us starts crying. Yeah, shut up. Yeah. Let's dance. Let's dance. See ya. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>